Today we're going to be talking about the Ultronic Crankshaft Reference Ignition Systems, and we've been doing those for almost 30 years, and it's been a real innovation in the, the industry with getting very accurate timing, eliminating the magneto drives and everything else so that you can uh, do a very accurate timing on the ignition uh, from cylinder to cylinder and cycle to cycle. So it is the best system out there uh, because it is referenced directly to the crankshaft. So what we'll be talking about today is the CPU-95, uh, the CPU-95 EVS or Enhanced Verispark, and the CPU 2000. So this will be an overview of those three systems as well as uh, how we crankshaft reference ignitions. So the systems we're going to talk about first if you go over to the medium and high speed engines. We originally had the Ultronic 3s out there uh, since the 60s and then in the 90s we came out with the CPU 90 which was the crankshaft reference system for the, the high speeds, the CATs, the Waukesha's uh, engines that originally took the Ultronic 3s. And as things had grown, uh, we have moved from the CPU 90, which was just a, a box, no display, into the CPU 95, which has uh, grown into various different displays uh, over the years. And now we have the uh, enhanced display module, which gives you a lot more features. Uh, the one beyond that is the, the enhanced VeriSpark variation, and that gives you uh, different spark profiles that uh, are, are very good at uh, pushing energy into the spark plug for lean burn applications, uh, applications that might have poor quality gas. And C2000 that we'll talk about today. That evolved from the large bore slow speed engines that originally took the Ultronic 2. Then we moved into the CPU 2. And again, that was a, a box that had no display. And then once we moved into the CPU 2000, we've had that for uh, over 20 years now. And that, that product has a nice display and it's pretty much the, uh, the standard of the industry on the large bore slow speed engines. The uh, Ultronic 2 uh, has been obsoleted, so uh, what's available for these engines nowadays is the CPU 2000, and we also have a CPU XL option. So we're going to talk first about the CPU 95. First of all, it's microprocessor-based uh, crankshaft reference digital ignition system for medium-sized engines. Uh, optimizes the engine combustion and performance. It's got various spark energy uh, and also a strike feature. The CPU 2000 has a, a four strike feature, uh, so it, it strikes four times if you choose that. So uh, maximizing spark plug life is the goal. Um, let you start out with lower spark energy, which erodes the spark plug less, and then you can bump that up through the life cycle. Of the spark plug is that you can G up and give it more strikes or more energy to continue the ability to fire that larger gap through the life cycle of the spark plug. The display, uh, now we have this enhanced display module, uh, gives you USB connectivity for programming, makes it real easy to connect to your USB on your computer. Uh, it gives you graphing so that you can quickly see uh, what's going on on the display with the cylinders and uh, custom output mapping. Uh, it's an easy retrofit from You know, going from the CPU the three, uh, you reutilize the same coils on the engine, ignition coils. Three CPU, uh, you're going to reutilize the the reset and gear teeth pickups, uh, and then the CPU 90. Uh, basically, this, that's sort of a plug and play going from CPU 90 to the 95. And all of these systems are good for uh, Div 2 group C and D areas. We also have some ATEX and uh, 
SAA approvals. So this is out of the application list for the ignition modules and the various modules uh, that are available. Uh, the standard is the either the eight or the 16 and the 16 can do a, a four cylinder engine. It's just, you got lower cost with the dash eight, which has eight outputs. The 18 is a single cap, 18 output. There's some 18 cylinder European engines. Uh, the, there's a dual cap, 18 cylinder. Um, and that's uh, with the dual cap that is utilized where there's some close firing angles. And there's a 952-20, uh, it's a dual cap. And then we've got the 958, which was the original VeriSpark, uh, which basically extends the spark, but it doesn't give you the multi-strike capability. So the, this VeriSpark, the 958-16, has pretty much been eclipsed by the 963-16, which is the enhanced VeriSpark. Uh, so that's, that's going to be the, the latest offering that we have uh, pretty much obsolete. It's the 958 From the application list, I just wanted to show you that uh, in the 3500 series of the Caterpillar, we have some different options. And for a standard 3516, you can use the 950-16, or you can go into the enhanced VeriSpark with the 963-16. But for the SI low emissions, uh, there's uh, the 95C, as we call it, or the 95 CAT version which is the 955-16. And then uh, for the EIS low emissions engine, we've got this enhanced VeriSpark with a 16E. And this engine application has the coils under the valve cover. So the 16E, you know, the standard version uh, is a 16A. The 16E has the calibration for those, valve, those coils underneath the valve cover. So that's one of the latest variations offered in the 95s. So we have a CP95 model display module, it's pretty much the standard nowadays, the EDM enhanced display module. So in, into the output module, we have gear tooth and reset pickup inputs. We have a Hall effect pickup input uh, for four cycle engines. And what happens is this Hall effect is on the cam or cam drive speed. And it, it, uh, when it comes around and it's live or energized from the, every other revolution, it acknowledges the reset pulse that comes in only on the compression stroke. So that way we can ignore a reset on the crankshaft that comes around every revolution of the, the engine. Uh, from that, we've got DC power, and we've got up to 20 ignition outputs. Into the enhanced dis display module, uh, we've got uh, a USB for programming. If you want to look at the data on the display all the time, you have to do it with the uh, and it's not very immune, so if it's a continuous monitor with the engine running, uh, you're going to want to use the 485. And then into the display module, we have a 4 to 20 going in, and that could be used to change the timing um, versus 4 to 20, and that's programmable when you program the actual EEPROM. There's also a miscellaneous input, and that miscellaneous input can uh, change your spark energy, uh, can put you into multi-strike can do a number of things depending on how you have programmed it. Reset and ring gear teeth and holes. This is a uh, part of the installation instructions. And you can see that here we have a, a pickup for the teeth or the holes. And typically on the Caterpillar, Waukesha, the higher speed engines, you're gonna have a ring gear starter. So you can very easily look at the number of ring gear teeth. And in the application list, it, it typically gives you what's standard for that application. If you're going into a CPU 2000 application, an integral type engine with no ring gear, uh, it's uh, air and head starting, you're gonna drill holes in the flywheel. And uh, that's pretty much the standard uh, on, on all these integrals nowadays. 
and uh, that's done by our distributors where they uh, scribe the flywheel and, and uh, measure it out and, and drill holes in the flywheel and then the pickup counts all those pulses and uh, counts so many pulses and, and fires, counts so many pulses and fires depending on the number of uh, holes in the flywheel and the uh, firing pattern that's programmed into the EEPROM for the engine application. There's a reset, which the reset pin is basically configured out of a quarter 20 bolt, uh, just ground down and secured with a lock nut. About so inches above the flywheel, so it can reject any garbage in the, in the flywheel, you know, any nicks or scratches or uh, auxiliary holes. And obviously, you want to keep it so far away from the barring holes. The inputs, uh, we've got the reset pickup and the, the crankshaft position, which is the holes or ring gear teeth. Uh, four cycle pickup if it's a four stroke. Uh, shutdown condition switch, which is a low voltage input, which will shut down. Input switch, which can change the spark characteristics. Four to 20, and, and most of the time the four to 20, yes? Yeah, you just you're cutting out a little bit here and there. I don't know if um, I don't know if you got uh, something that might might be giving you a hard time there. Can you hear me? I sure can. Yeah. Seems to be much better. Thank you, Tom. Sorry to interrupt. David, can you hear me? No, that's okay. Can you hear me okay now? Perfectly. Yep. Okay. I, I switched the two USB because I've got a mouse and a headset. So no I just problem. swapped them. Maybe that it'll be improved. No problem. Thanks, Tom. Sorry to interrupt. Well, that's okay. Um, so we have the miscellaneous input switch, which will... Um, change your spark characteristics, single strike, multi-strike, um, spark energy, four to 20. Uh, usually that's used on the integral engines uh, versus the boost of the engine uh, or for startup. Then the USB, um, and that is on the enhanced display, display module only. The prior one did not have USB and as uh, computers evolved, getting rid of their serial ports. We've made it so that uh, you can just use a USB out of your computer into a USB on the back of the enhanced display module. And uh, 485 communications are on that EDM also. Magnetic pickups uh, haven't changed too much over the years, but they're 691, 118. They're two-wire non-powered, uh, they generate a voltage as the dicontinations of the ferrous metals pass by, and uh, gaps are typically 15 thousandths, so an eight, uh, one out of 18 uh, equals 55 thousandths per revolution of the pickup. So many people will screw the pickup in until the tip just touches the, the tooth or you back a quarter of a turn, you get about 15,000. So you don't have to get a feeler gauge in there. All effect pickup, and again, that's only on four cycle engines. Uh, same 5818 thread, uh, same gapping techniques. These uh, will handle a 60 or 80 thousandths of gap. And again, that's uh, usually on something that is turning at camshaft speed. Uh, with a magnet as the trigger. So the higher of the 95, we've got eight to 20 ignition outputs. Uh, we've got three switches built into it, which are really convenient. We've got a fire con confirm yeah, confirmation output, which is normally closed, and it's also used as a full per fuel permissive. So as the ignition goes through its cranking cycle and it re acknowledges the reset and gear teeth, 
then it starts to fire, then it's going to change the state of this uh, fuel permissive switch, the fire can confirm. And at that point, then you can use that in your logic to turn the fuel onto the engine. But per, uh, get your ignition coming on, and then uh, you can, once the switch changes states, you can add fuel. We've got alarm and shutdowns, which we'll go over a little bit later. Uh, they're separated. You've got 45 communications in the display module, and also your USB in the display module. The terminations in the ignition module, <clears throat> you have a shutdown input, and this is a low voltage terminal. It's not like a shutdown lead, uh, so it's a logic level input, and that'll shut your ignition off. So if you go into a shutdown, um, through another uh, devices, um, this will put you into a shutdown mode. Your miscellaneous, uh, that's again can change your spark characteristics. You got an alarm, a fault, fire confirm, all as inputs individually. Your serial communications here go out to your display module as well as DC power. And then you've got your pickups for gear teeth and then reset. And then for the force cycle, you've got your Hall effect connections and then obviously your power. So the, the features, you've got the comprehensive display capability. character control, global cylinder control, diagnostic test and trending capabilities, serial communications, and easy retrofit uh, from the previous variations on those engines and certified for hazardous areas. The enhanced display capability, and this has been around for almost 10 years, and it's pretty much obsoleted the prior version, which was only a two-line display. But this gives, the nice thing about this display is that it gives you the USB uh, programmability, uh, which makes it real easy to hook up to your common computers as serial ports have gone away. So this is going to show you the system status and the mode, the running information, diagnostic messages, timing status, and control messages, spark messages, and messages. A typical normal running display is going to tell you that it's firing, the engine's running, your RPM, your energy level and number of strikes, uh, SS is single strike, your 4 to 20 coming in, uh, what the value is, your ignition timing, and then the programmed uh, that you put into the unit for P is a 16, a two cycle, A is even fire, 360 holes in the flywheel and the rest of the information. So this, this is all uh, programmed when you program the EEPROM. The terminal program. The status screen you see on the right here is ready, sinking, firing. And as you go through a rolling of the engine, it, uh, first of all, it says ready when there's no RPM. You get up to 100 RPM, it starts looking at the pickups. And once it goes into sync, and it'll go into a firing mode, and then it's just going to ramp up until as you add fuel to it to get to the, the, pro, the RPM that you're going to govern to. And once it goes into firing, that fire confirm switch changes state, and that's where you can add fuel. More system status screens. Uh, when the unit, uh, say you would just cut off the fuel to the engine during a start attempt, uh, it would just basically coast to a stop, and it would show stalled because you hadn't in, initiated a shutdown of any type of the contact. The shutdown input, which is the low voltage shutdown input, or uh, some of these, you can lead on a standard uh, CPU 95. Uh, but if you do that, it's going to show that you have shutdown based on one of those two inputs. And then the, the, you have diagnostics, which are either a warning or a fault. And then when you press the diag button, it's going to give you more information. We'll go through some more of those diagnostics a little bit later, but the spark characteristic control, uh, you can select double strike on or off. Uh, the energy levels, E1, 2, 3, and the medium is 100 millijoules, 160 volts, and that's equal to the Ultronic 3. 
So if you want to get even more spark plug life from what you had before, you can go to the lower energy and as the spark plug erodes, you, you just start bumping it up until you get to 125 millijoules. At that point, maybe you initiate the double strike, so you get even more energy. You get two 125 millijoule um, sparks. So again, I think that's low through the life cycle of the plugs can lengthen your spark plug life. Ways to control your timing. Uh, you can do it from the keypad by going to global or cylinder timing. Your serial control, uh, serial communications from a PLC or some other device. Analog versus a 4 to 20. And you've got timing versus RPM. That's somewhat common on like a superior engine. They've always had some type of a timing versus RPM curve built into them. And you can do that. You can customize that for any engine. Uh, you just put the table in there with the, the RPM and the number of degrees of retard that you'd like. Then you've got a miscellaneous input, uh, which is a one-step global timing control, and you program how many degrees you want to change timing with that contact closure. Miscellaneous input, uh, you get, uh, this is all programmable through the terminal program. You can do three different things. You can give it a one-step timing. Land back to propane or you know, pipeline natural gas. Spark energy control, you can program it so if you close that contact, you get extra energy or go into double strike. Uh, so you have all these options. It's all customizable with the terminal program and, and contact inputs. You have two classes of diagnostics. You've got warnings and you've got faults. If it's a fault like a missing reset or overspeed, something that's critical, um, you're going to shut the, engine, the ignition down internally through its own logic and it's going to spit that out for you on the display with the view diagnostics and then you would see why uh, that has occurred. Fire confirm that that's going to allow you to turn your fuel off also. And warnings, uh, again, uh, that might be something that's non-emergency. It could be an open primary, uh, something like that, something that you deem to be non-critical. And whatever you wire to that alarm output, that's what it's going to do. It could go into a PLC and just uh, alert you to the fact that something's wrong is going on or you could wire it into a shutdown system. So if you get an open primary, it actually shuts you down. So it's your choice. These are all options and it's all programmable and it's made so that you can have it your way. So uh, some of these diagnostics, uh, gear tooth fault on the pickup, missing pulses, uh, reset pickup fault, missing pulses, You've got Hall effect pickup fault, missing no sync, and uh, you've also got a ring gear fault. It tells you how many teeth it read. Um, we've had this occur where you have had missing teeth on a flywheel, and after it gets so many missing teeth, it's going to spit out that it's only reading so many teeth. So it's going to tell you sort of where your problem is, so that it's either your gap or you've got some chipped teeth on your flywheel. And then you've also got something like the overspeed. Um, and again, this is a programmable overspeed. Um, if it happens, you're going to go into an internal shutdown. It's going to show you that you've got a diagnostic and it's going to tell you that you went into an overspeed and actually how many RPM you actually reached. Primary and secondary discharge diagnostics. It's not just to use it uh, the coil, ignition coil, to gather the information. So there's no sensors to get this information. And uh, it's basically built in just by wiring in a traditional method. Um, the plain language indication of the fault, data is displayed in the 95 display, and you can get it serially. And all these are user 
adjustable thresholds uh, so you can use them on virtually any engine with any spark plug gap or spark plug type. So we can detect open and shorted primary wiring and coil issues. Uh, we look for low and accessible application percussion anomalies. You can use this to determine the proper point to change your spark plugs, and you can use it to automatically change your energy, and which is you're able to lengthen your spark plug uh, life. So the reference number, it's a unitless number, uh, it goes from zero to 255, and allows for the implementation of thresholds. So say you put your, your new plugs in, your engine's running normally and running well, and your reference number may be 100. You can choose as the engine uh, runs, and maybe you're halfway through your spark plug life and it, it goes up to 120. You might say, okay, at 120, I'm gonna bump my energy level up uh, from E. one to e2 if a number hits a one third, i'm going to bump it up into energy level three so you start low and, and bump your energy levels up that way and you can also bump it into multi-strike uh, if you choose to you have a graphing uh, capability it gives you the spark reference number across the engine so you can see that you know some of the cylinders are running with higher numbers and some are running with lower numbers i'll show you more examples we also have uh, the ability to look at each individual cylinder and gives you the instantaneous number, the cylinder average, and also the engine average. So you know, might know that 2B is running um, quite a few points above the 118 engine average. Cylinder 2B, um, shown here in the graphical format, and then uh, here we have uh, the one we had seen previously where you have some of the cylinders running above, some of them are running below. We also have alarm warning diagnostics. We have primary open here and primary short on the cylinder A and B. Uh, you want to uh, correct that as soon as possible before you damage the ignition. Um, and again, an open primary is usually uh, open wiring, broken wire to a coil, or a bad coil, or a bad ignition output module. Here we are showing the low spark voltage on cylinder C. And, and again, that low spark is a chosen value. So like I said, if you're running at 100, you might choose low spark at 90. And uh, maybe a high spark voltage might be up at 200, which means that uh, your, your cylinders experience a, a high spark voltage, uh, worn spark plugs. So at this point, maybe you want to flag it to change your plugs. But these values uh, through a normal cycle are, are, are you start, you know, the start out and what they evolve to, you can choose some uh, thresholds where to change the energy and change where your warnings are. Okay, uh, this one is showing uh, output E, which is cylinder five, no secondary spark. Um, this one is low from engine, and that is uh, a, like a, a low from the average of the engine. That's another threshold that you can program. Here we have a high from the engine, just the opposite of low from engine average. And then we also have a COV, which the, is the coefficient of variation. And that is where um, your spark plug demand on a cylinder is varying significantly from cycle to cycle. So if the cylinders are running at 100, typically brand new, one cylinder is then down to 90, that COV will give you a number that tells you that your your variation is high, which means that from cycle to cycle, you're, gonna, you're experiencing something that is causing the spark energy to be uh, varying quite a bit. 
So that could be, you know, an injection valve uh, that's failing or intermittent uh, spark plug that's starting to foul, something that is causing that energy demand in that cylinder to vary excessively. So it helps you find problems within the engine itself. So we have some special live models, and uh, the Verispark was the first answer to some of the inductive systems uh, where we wanted to give you a, a much longer energy cycle, uh, and that is with a special output module. And the other option that we have or uh, uh, model that we have is the 95C, and that fits on the SI-controlled Caterpillar. Caterpillar 3500 series engines. So the Verispark, uh, it gives you an ultra long spark duration mode, gives you better combustion stability, reducing misfire, and that is only used with the red oils. It gives you the fast rise time of CD addition of an inductive system. And once we came out with this, uh, people pretty much quit talking about inductive systems um, being better in certain instances with uh, poor fuel quality and such. So uh, it's got all the great characteristics of a CD ignition with all, none of the negatives of an inductive system. And it's the same programming, same EEPROM, is used in the Verispark as a standard 95 and also the enhanced Verispark. So the typical standard duration, 400 microsecond of a CD ignition, uh, maybe a standard 95, you, you get your breakdown, you ignite and create the spark across this, the gap in this, the plug, and then it continues to fire for some duration and then it We're able to keep that energy through a specific circuitry, keep it extremely long duration, almost five times as long, 2,000 microseconds. And then inductive systems, they had very slow rise time, which was a bit of a negative, uh, creates more uh, spark erosion. And they had very long duration, but uh, where uh, we excel is this fast rise time of a Verispark system. So uh, pretty much uh, with inductors uh, coming back around over the years. So Verispark's uh, ideal for engines with poorly mixed air fuel ra ratio and uh, their charges uh, which are slow speed engines or high speed engines right, running at light or offload conditions. Uh, and those are with the red coils. It's a single plug application. Uh, and you can't power anything from the G lead with that variation. We also have double strike capability with a standard CPU 95 um, and the Verispark Function input, so it gives you the ability to choose how it's utilized. The 95C system for Cat 35 series engines, um, that's for the SI controller. Uh, originally, these had an Ultronic 3 and then an Ultronic interface box, which worked w along with the Ultronic 3, and it still used reset and gear teeth pickups, uh, but that was uh, pretty much. Uh, a hybrid system as it evolved. Um, so that's still available. Um, eliminates the ignition system related moving parts, <clears throat> gets rid of the Ultronic 3, and uh, features the 95 diagnostic as well as the energy adjustment and multi strike. Display and diagnostic information is available remotely. Keypad accessibility features are available remotely. 45 communications enable integration with PCs and PLCs. So the, the first CPU95 display module, 791902, it only had ASCII communications. 
we've obsoleted that in favor of the 791909, which is the enhanced 95 display. And this is the standard that fits everything. And it also has ASCII, so it replaces the previous variation, but also adds Modbus RTU and USB for programming. The program for you use with the 95 or 95 EVS, it's all rolled into one now. So when you download your terminal programs, this is the one you want. That does all the 95s and the 95 EVS. The enhanced display module connections. Uh, on there, you've got a USB port uh, to the side of the terminal strip. And that, with that, uh, that's the USB type B, which was common in printers over the years. So they're, they're a relatively uh, common cable to use, but it uh, goes USB to your computer and the USB type B to this connection right here. And on here, you've got your power, your communications going back to your ignition module. You've got 45 to a PLC or some other device, miscellaneous input may give you multi-strike or extra energy, uh, spark energy control. And then you've got current loop input versus a 4 to 20. This is the monitor adjust screen. This would be utilizing the serial or uh, through the, your USB port, but gives you the node number. The ignition is energy level one, single strike. You're firing, your RPM, your timing, <coughs> energy level multi-strike and all these values are available on the screen of the display module also and again this is just uh, a monitor screen when you press the diagnostics you come to a page that tells you the uh, program that's been put into the unit the unit that's been programmed the date uh, the engine average of the spark reference number and then it gives you the the, the raw number and then the average. This is a time weighted average. Uh, so instantaneously, these may be bouncing a little bit, but you'll see they're very close to the average that you see here. If you do have a primary open, primary short, low secondary voltage, high secondary voltage, no secondary voltage, low from engine, high from engine, or high variation or COV, uh, there would be a flag in, in this matrix. Terminal program configuration page, uh, the node ID uh, when you're programming to the unit itself. You select the ignition module, uh, part number, the firing pattern from the application list, uh, C, it's ABC. So it's, this would be a three cylinder, two cycle, A, even firing. And, and that's all uh, in the application information for the particular engine. The number of gear teeth, the current loop versus the timing span that it'll change, whether you have an RPM map, in this case, no. If you hit the button here, it'll say yes and give you another chart to fill in. Advanced features, uh, that would be where you would change your um, spark energy, change the offsets, your overspeed, your ignition timing, uh, your one-step timing, where your reset pin is located, your energy level, and your multi-strike. And then on this side, uh, the labels, you can program labels so that you can say which engine it is, engine number one, two, three, or your location, address, whatever it might be. We had a glitch here. Somebody hit the wrong button.
Okay, now we're going to talk about the 95 EVS VeriSpark. Um, this is the EVS for the Caterpillar Ignitions. And the uh, it delivers all the capabilities and functions in the standard CPU. Ninety five uh, system with enhanced very control diagnostics and display while you optimize for specific use with the existing EIS ignition coils. Uh, it's simple to install and utilizes the same pickup arrangement, input power wiring, and standard ninety five display module, along with three components specific to the EIS application. Uh, it uses a standard easy rail ignition output harness, standard easy G box, and there's an engine wall harness to the engine block converter. Um, there's no spe special configuration wiring or other intervention required for integration with the existing engine controls, and all of the ignition firing events are decoded using the appropriate engine-specific wiring harness. So this picture shows the standard output module, standard display, pickups, and ring gear teeth are all the same. Where it differs is this, instead of going out to the coils, it has to go to a um, easy rail J box, and that's specific to the application. And then there's what we call the engine block connector harness that goes back out to the engine because the block actually holds All the wiring Those are all the coils below the valve cover. So uh, that is that special unit. And you can see on this engine, that's the uh, valve cover. You can see no coil on the top of it. And that is what we're doing with this special variation. So that's relatively uh, new. We've had prototypes on for a couple years, and uh, it's been released to the market for a while now. So now we're back to the CPU 2000. And there's a lot of crossover between the two products uh, as far as diagnostics, uh, miscellaneous, which I'll we'll highlight two uh, Major benefits, and this is the logic module. Uh, again, this is instead of a double strike, this is a multi strike. It gives you four strikes. Um, Again, same capability of increasing the spark energy, multi-strikes. The difference here is that this logic module sends all the information to the output module. In the CPU95 system, the logic and the output circuitry is all in that output box. In this case, it's all uh, separated from logic module to output module. So the logic module talks to the diagnostic module, diagnostic module to the output module. And this diagnostic module is at least uh, from the logic module, it went direct to the output module. But that limited some of the diagnostics. And as we learned from the CPU 95, the diagnostics that we were able to do with the energy levels uh, based on that, we rolled into the CPU 2000. But so that the output module and logic remained the same, it was just an add-on diagnostic module. So uh, for example, uh, the original product, if you had a, a spark problem, it would give you a, a primary or a secondary fault, but it tell, didn't tell you which cylinder, didn't give you a reference number, it didn't give you a lot of information. So all you have to do is add the diagnostic module and the cabling is, is just an add-on cable. So that gave you all the features of uh, the 95 as the 2000 evolved. And as of right now, almost everybody uses it with a diagnostic module. Input outputs, it's uh, got your shutdown condition switch to shut it down. Miscellaneous to give you spark energy control. 
crankshaft and reset uh, position pickups, a hall effect if you're a four stroke. Or things versus the serial information. Inputs and outputs, uh, it's either a 16 or 32 output module. You got your fire confirm, alarm, and fault, just like the 95. You've got 45 serial data, Modbus or ASCII. You've got display capability, which uh, is much like the 95. However, it is a two-line display. Uh, you've got spark characteristic control, global and individual cylinder timing control, everything the 95 did, and more, because this is four up cylinder engines, 32 outputs. So sometimes on these big engines, you have two plugs, two coils per cylinder, uh, so that you have individual diagnostics on those two. Uh, we have individual outputs for the two, cylinder, two plugs that fire at the same time. And sometimes those are um, a side and center plug, which have different reference numbers. Sometimes they're a pre-chamber plug and an open chamber plug. Some, are, some of the Ingersolls would start on um, the open chamber plug, and then as it came up to RPM, it would shift over to the uh, jet, uh, jet or the plug that's uh, going to run the engine and cuts off the open chamber plug. So there's a lot of variations in application with this product. Similar to the 95, you've got the 4 to 20 value. It tells you that you're firing energy level 2 multi-strike, and this multi-strike would be four strikes, not two. Your RPM, and typically this application is a 300 RPM ignition. It can run up over 1,000, but typically it's on the integrals. And then your ignition timing. It tells you that you're ready, sinking, firing, just like the 95. It'll tell you that you're stalled or that you're shut down or that you have a warning um, or that you have a fault. And again, you have both two classes, warnings and faults. Our characteristic control, uh, you can select multi-strike on and off, uh, gives you better combustion stability at light loads or at startup. And then energy levels, uh, you can see that the energy levels are quite a bit higher than the other one. Was uh, the mid level under the upper level is 125, where this starts out at 125, then it goes to 150, then 185, and these are on bigger bore engines, so they need more spark energy. And then you can also spark this four times. So on low and E1 multi strike, you'd have four 125 millijoule sparks. So that's going to give you a lot uh, in comparison to the 95. So again, Using the lowest energy setting possible for the conditions can give you longer spark plug life. Timing control, you can change timing from the keypad through serial information, uh, through the 4 to 20, timing versus RPM, uh, or your miscellaneous input. And you can choose how many of these you use. You can use none of them. You can use all of them. Uh, you can only use the keypad, or you can use any of these in addition to the keypad. So it's all programmable. So you can choose it and make it the way you'd like. Like, it gives you one-step timing, spark energy control, multi-strike control, or you can even disconnect spark plugs. Some of those Ingersolls uh, disconnected that plug uh, after startup, and it's a very cost-effective way to get rid of the OEM disconnect switch. So that's been a, a real uh, plus for this product too. Uh, gives you a two-tier diagnostic structure, warnings, faults. Uh, and once you get the warning, you view the diagnostics hitting the button. Uh, it, once you get that, it gives you an alarm output. Doesn't shut down the ignition uh, unless you tie that output to a safety Shutdown system and immediate action like missing rest, reset, overspeed, and again gives you the view diagnostics. You hit the button, 
and it faults the alarm or shut down outputs, opens the fire confirm, and shuts down the engine. And uh, anything that it does for a fault, you can view it on the view diagnostics. One of the prior, faults that you'll see, uh, there is an A and a B side because this is a dual capacitor ignition. So when you have a little uh, on firing occurred, so you may have a problem with your DC power coming in, limited current, or the ignition unit may be failing also. Uh, your current loop could be out of range. You know, if your 4 to 20 has failed, gone below 2 milliamps and above 22, it's going to fault you. Uh, primary fault. Um, uh, open white coil or backup module fault 2. Uh, B and R on connector 2 are primary shorts. So uh, on a 32 output unit, you have two primary connectors, and that's connector 1, connector 2. Standard diagnostics, uh, gear tooth pickup fault missing, uh, missing pulses on your reset, all effect pickup fault, ring gear fault, wrong number of T-thread, overspeed, and the actual RPM, what you have reached when it went into overspeed. And then here, because of that logic board, uh, we have some fail-safe uh, things built into it. So if the, the checksum uh, has failed as, as it checks up on itself on the micro, uh, if it checksum fails, it shuts itself down. So the diagnostic module adds significant troubleshooting. It adds on to standard installation. And I commented that most people are opting for that right off the bat if they're installing one today. Um, no special uh, probes or special coils. This all links in like with the 95 to standard coils. Um, the data is displayed in the 2000 display and serially. And uh, those are all user adjustable thresholds to program it so that it, it does what you want it to do. We also have the spark reference number like the 95 where it's the cylinder A, uh, the, the value, instantaneous, the cylinder average, the engine average so you can compare the, the cylinder's average to the engine so that you know whether high or low. We also have bar the instantaneous value between the low and high set points. Enhanced alarm warning diagnostics uh, tells you primary open or primary short with the diagnostic module. Low spark voltage, high spark voltage, and these, these are all programmable values. Low from engine, high from engine. No secondary spark, and again, that's a program. Mobile value. V, um, again, this one's showing a 9. So a lot of the integrals have uh, somewhat variable uh, cylinder mixing. And this is a good way to tell uh, how much variables you have in the uh, combustion on that cylinder. So a summary of those set points, you've got low spark bolts, high spark bolts, no secondary spark, low from engine, high from engine, and a high COV. The data display screens, um, got, you have three data display screens, uh, which is a quick and convenient overview of the conditions. You have a bar graph of each output displaying the spark reference number. You have a bar graph of each output displaying the difference between the spark reference number and the calculated engine average. And then you have a bar graph of the output displaying the magnitude of the COV. And again, that's the first one for 15 years. Uh, again, if, if you would have an older unit, all you would have to do is upgrade the firmware to the 2.1 and you get all the latest features. So the screen one shows the bar graph of the spark reference number. Screen two um, 
gives you the uh, bar graph, uh, the spark reference number for each output versus the group average. And then screen number three, this is the bar graph of the COV. So cylinder A and cylinder H, uh, you might want to take a look at those, make sure your plug's good, make sure your injection valve is functioning properly. But it, it's a good indicator of engine health. Serial communications, uh, again, as long as you have 2.1, you've got Modbus communications. It's RS-485, you can hook it into a PLC or your laptop. Terminal program uh, looks pretty much identical to the 95, uh, where you have an adjust screen. Um, same values, pretty much. You've got a uh, monitor adjust screen that gives you the diagnostics of what's going on with your cylinders. Here we see nothing in the matrix flagging anything, so it gives you the COVs, which are all low, one to three. Uh, the spark reference number, which are, you know, this one's pretty high, 242. 234, and you've got one down at 199 and 200. So uh, you might want to look at the spark plugs on this engine to see why things are quite a bit different between the different cylinders. So the system configuration, uh, number of counts per the crankshaft revolution, that's either ring gear or holes. Firing pattern, we get that off the application list or off the engine nameplate. And then your custom timing control, you can choose that how you'd like to do that. And again, the EEPROM can go from one unit to the other uh, quite easily. The programming parameters, uh, again, 16, your ID to the unit, firing pattern, gear teeth, current loop, advanced features, uh, your overspeed, energy level, multi-fire, reset pin close location, and then all the custom data from the engine application. The uh, CPU 2000 until uh, some period not too long ago could only be programmed from a uh, laptop that had a, a true serial, native serial port. And that uh, pretty much is going away on most of the laptops. So this uh, bulletin, um, 11, 10, 20. Uh, we've come out with a serial adapter. Uh, this has a serial connection, goes to your lap, lap, laptop, and this connector uh, plugs right onto the programming port on the CPU 2000. So this uh, program with the B connection to your laptop, which brings it up into the, the current world of uh, capabilities of your laptops. So uh, just be aware that you can order that, uh, the part number, and the bulletin is available on our website. So the ease of retrofit, uh, you know, you went from a, a CPU or an Ultronic 2, and those coils on an Ultronic 2, uh, you know, they can be expensive. And 16 cylinder, you often have two per cylinder. That's 32 coils. So the, the two CPU, the CPU 2000, all utilize the same coils. So all you have to do is uh, purchase the uh, CPU 2000 diagnostic module, output module, and appropriate cables. Um, add your uh, ring gear and uh, reset pickups, uh, harnesses, and such. And you've gone from uh, an Ultronic 2 into the world of CPU 2000 and current technology. So at this point, uh, that concludes the present presentation. Uh, are there any questions? Thomas, well done. Many thanks to you. Excellent review. Folks, questions for Mr. Tom, Mr. Tom Smith on uh, crankshaft reference systems, 2000s, 95s, BDS, version for the CATS. Anything for Thomas? Going once, going twice. Tommy must have filled in all the blanks there. So, uh, well, I hope so. 
there's always questions though. Sometimes they don't come until the next day. And that's right. If that's the case, you can always email and uh, ask the questions. I think everybody out there in the world knows how to get a hold of us. Our website has all the contacts for our distributors, our internal contacts, our regional managers. So from the website, you can navigate to just about anybody in the world.